All right, gang, whiplash. How's it going, guys? Today I'm going to be discussing the cinematography and the employment of colors throughout Damien Chazelle's movie, Whiplash. More specifically, I'll be discussing the use of frames within frames to convey isolation, angles and framing to portray power, distance to depict interest, and the use of color to highlight focus and drive. But first, allow me to summarize the movie for those of you that have never seen it. Whiplash follows the story of Andrew Naiman, a first-year student at Schaefer Conservatory who aspires to be a legendary drummer. Naiman's life drastically changes when one day the conductor of the studio band, Terence Fletcher, asks him to join his ensemble. Drums with me. While Naiman is excited at first, he soon learns how Fletcher truly is. Parker, that is not your boyfriend's dick. Do not come early. Naaman goes on to endure physical and mental pain from Fletcher until one day he has enough and attacks Fletcher and is kicked out of school. Naaman gives up on the drums, and with the help of his allegations, Fletcher is fired from his conductor position. Finally, the two are reunited at a jazz club where Fletcher invites Naaman to play with him at the jazz festival. However, at the night of the show, Fletcher gives Naaman the wrong sheets and Naaman is embarrassed in front of the crowd. However, again, Naaman returns on stage, takes control of the band, and gives one of the greatest performances ever seen on the drums. And as the song ends, the movie does too, with Naaman reaching stardom and Fletcher realizing that he has finally found his star. But anyway, let's get back to the analysis, starting with frames within frames. From the first shot of the movie, the audience can already tell a lot about Andrew Neiman's character. Andrew is first seen through a door of what seems to be a practice room at Schaefer University. While the hallway leading up to the room is dark and green, the practice room which holds Neiman and his drum set is well lit and colorful. Just from this opening scene, the audience can tell that Andrew doesn't care about the world outside of his drumming. He's a very focused musician. However, his entrapment in this room may reflect how his obsession for drumming has led him into a life of isolation and loneliness. This theme is repeated later on in the movie, when Andrew calls his ex-girlfriend trying to get back together with her. Earlier in the movie, he broke up with his girlfriend over drumming, but now that drumming is out of the way, he wants to try to get things back together. He starts off the phone call standing near a window, representing his hope and positivity. However, when he finds out that she is in a new relationship, he walks into another room, ending up being framed by another door frame representing his loneliness and isolation. Also throughout the movies, frames help depict his detachment and isolation from his father. Once in their kitchen, and twice at the final show. His father doesn't understand or support Neiman's goals. Although they appear to spend a lot of time together, it's obvious that the two are in two separate worlds. In their book The Film Experience, Corrigan and White state, Camera angles can sometimes indicate psychological, moral, or political meanings in a film, as when victims are seen from above and oppressors from below. And there are a few better examples of this than when Fletcher talks down to his students, colleagues, just about anybody. Let's take the rehearsal scene for example. Throughout most of the rehearsal scene, Fletcher is kept in the top left side of the frame, while his students are kept in the bottom right side. Also, when Fletcher is shown, he is shown with a low angle shot. Meanwhile, his students are shot with a high angle shot. Top left, bottom right. High angle shot, low angle shot. Top left, bottom right. Powerful. Weak. This highlights the fact that Fletcher is almost always talking down to people. Throughout the movie, few characters actually make eye contact with Fletcher. Even fewer characters have conversations at eye level with him. Naaman is one of these exceptions. Whenever another character makes eye contact with Fletcher, it almost immediately breaks. What you, there's no fucking Mars bar down there, what are you looking at? Look up here, look at me. However, Naaman is able to maintain the eye contact, even have a few conversations with Fletcher. Naaman and Fletcher talk in the hallway, at the show, and at the jazz club. The combination of these techniques helps build Fletcher's character. It shows how powerful and how intense he is. And the fact that Naaman is the only character that sees eye to eye with him says a lot about his character as well. In 
Howard Suber's book, The Power of Film, he quotes, In a sense, we might say that there's no such thing as an inherently interesting character. There are only interesting character relationships. What makes most characters interesting is often not the characters themselves, but rather their relationships with other characters. Alone, Fletcher's just a strict and abusive teacher. And Neiman is just a dreaming drummer. But together, Fletcher is willing to push Neiman to his potential so he can get his star student. And Neiman is willing to endure anything to become the best. On the outside, these characters hate each other. But deep down, they need each other. Speaking of character relations, let's look into Neiman's relationships with people as portrayed through distance. In the scene where Neiman breaks up with his girlfriend, the camera starts off very close to Neiman's face and distant to Nicole's. This signifies that Neiman has control of the conversation. However, by the time he is done saying what he has to say, the camera distances have changed. Neiman is now farther away and Nicole is very close. This portrays their interests in the conversation. Nicole is emotionally devoted to the relationship and does not want it to end, and Neiman has said what he had to say and nothing will change his mind. Because I want to be great. However, at the end, Nicole understands that there's no changing his mind and the camera gives both of them equal distance signifying their shared disinterest in the relationship. Similarly, later on in the jazz club, Neiman and Fletcher sit at a table and talk about Fletcher losing his job. Neiman does not really care too much since he was a part of the reason that Fletcher lost his job. But the minute Fletcher mentions finding his Charlie Parker, Neiman is interested, and the camera shows his interest by switching to a closer shot of both characters. Sure, Neiman hated Fletcher's teaching style, but he desperately wishes that he could have been Fletcher's Charlie Parker. After admitting he never found his Charlie Parker, but he tried, the camera switches back to the farther shots from before, and the two part ways. Fletcher knows that Neiman wants to be the best, and he uses this to his advantage. After he catches Neiman's interest with the Charlie Parker speech, he invites him to come play with him at the jazz festival. And this is his perfect opportunity to exact revenge on Neiman. But at the same time, it's the perfect opportunity to test his abilities. Will Neiman give up, or will Fletcher have finally found his Charlie Parker? Spoiler alert, he uh, finds his Charlie Parker. Both scenes exemplify how Neiman is only interested in becoming the best drummer he can be. His main focus is his drumming. Everything else in the world doesn't really matter to him. The way Neiman doesn't care about anybody else besides Fletcher is very telling of his character. It's like Huber said, no interesting characters, just interesting character relationships. Do I look like a double fucking rainbow to you? Finally, let's talk about color. Throughout the movie, most of the performance scenes are filtered with a yellow light, which brings out the brass in the instruments and highlights the intensity of the performance. However, other scenes in life are colored regularly. When Naaman's on the bus, when Naaman's laying in bed, when he's practicing at home. It's almost as if they are two different worlds. And in a way, they are. On stage, Naaman is a completely different person. He's focused, drived, and intense. The only two performances throughout the movie that don't have the yellow tint are the rehearsals at the beginning and the second to last performance. These two scenes lack intensity because the first one is with the JV band and the second one, he doesn't know what he's doing, he doesn't have the right cheat music. However, when Neyman does know what he's doing, the yellow tint returns and it's just an intense scene. The difference in colors between onstage and offstage scenes highlights the difference between performing and living for musicians. Normal life is boring, but performing is just... the dream. So let's sum this up. The framing of Neyman represents his isolation in the world. The specific angles and framing highlight Fletcher's power. Distance implies Naaman's interest in Fletcher and disinterest in other characters. And his opinion means a lot to you, doesn't it? Yeah. And the warm lighting on stage contrasts the cool lighting off stage, highlighting the intensity of performance. These techniques all highlight the very important characteristics of becoming a professional musician. While the outsider might think that Naaman's living a sad life, Naaman is very aware of the life he's living and he's proud of it. He wants to be the best and he'll do anything to achieve that. Whiplash as a whole is a commentary on how far people are willing to go and how far they are willing to be pushed to become the best. Only through alienation, determination, and a complete devotion to a craft can a person achieve absolute greatness. But is greatness truly worth it in the end? That's up to you.
Thanks for watching.